Hello there. Next Tuesday marks the third anniversary of Brexit and today Britain is suffering the consequences. The Conservative governing party is deeply divided and the country is doing worse economically. Three years ago, Boris Johnson took a seat in front of a fireplace at 10 Downing Street to tell the nation what he meant by Brexit. This is not the end, this is the beginning, said Britain's then Prime Minister. He clenched his left hand into a fist as if he were giving courage not only to the British but also to himself. It was the evening of January 31st in 2020, the day when Great Britain finally officially left the European Union after years of tough negotiations. A lot has happened since then. The pandemic and the war in Ukraine and its economic consequences have also put Great Britain to the test. Not to mention the political unrest in the ranks of the Tories. Although Johnson has since been ousted from office for repeated misconduct, it was primarily Brexit that further divided the party. Ideologically opposed factions were more concerned with fighting than governing. That's what observers complained. The fact that Brexit has damaged the UK is now even acknowledged in the ranks of the Tories, albeit always behind closed doors. The country is in recession and living standards are falling. Brexit costs money. Great Britain's economic power is 5 to 6% lower than it could otherwise have been. That was said by Ulrich Hoppe of the German-British Chamber of Commerce and Industry in London. And he told this to German media this week. Actually, no one disputes that anymore except some really hardcore guys in the comments. Unlike ex-Prime Minister Liz Truss or Boris Johnson, Chancellor of the Exchequer Jeremy Hunt struck a cautious tone in the speech in central London on Friday. His plan for growth is required, inspired and enabled by Brexit, he said. Three years after leaving the EU, the government is still trying to get the situation under control instead of bringing about real change, as experts emphasize. Like the government, many companies that exported products to the EU have been trying to change course since Brexit. Yeah, but how? One of them is Cyclock, a manufacturer of bicycle hangers in northeast London. Before Brexit, we feared the worst, said founder Andrew Lang. And then it happened, he said. After leaving the EU, total sales fell by 25%. Companies continue to struggle with the bureaucracy, with the papers, the forms, confirmed Hopper from the um, British UK, uh, German Chamber of Commerce. In addition, Brexit has increased the shortage of skilled workers, primarily in the lower wage brackets. After all, many Europeans left the country during the pandemic and few came back. Restaurants are affected by the consequences, but so is the national health system NHS, which is already under a lot of pressure. More and more entrepreneurs are now venting their frustration publicly. The owner of London's Padea and Trudel restaurant, Jordan Frieder, has recently had to reduce his opening hours due to a lack of waiters. And this was the worst event in his career. The situation hit him harder than COVID and the energy or cost of living crisis. That's what he told journalists. The industrial designer Andrew Lang does not want to lose his optimism, however. His company currently sells many of its products on a contract basis rather than to individual customers. This gives both us and the customer more planning security, he explained. And Hopper also remains confident. Great Britain remains an attractive business location, he said. For the Tories, however, the future looks bleak. They are far behind the Labour Party in the polls. And it's considered likely that the Conservative Party will not win the next government election or general election, which is scheduled to take place in early 2025 at the very latest. Even the Conservative Telegraph recently admitted that nothing had been achieved through Brexit. 
The dream of a new beginning promised by Boris Johnson three years ago, yeah, it seems over. Almost exactly three years ago, during a TV debate, Boris Johnson promised to put something special under the Christmas tree for then Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, a Brexit deal. It was the time of the election campaign, the time when the Prime Minister was campaigning for voters with his promise to finally push through Brexit. And he did it with success. He won with a large majority and kept his promise. In December 2019, the British House of Commons and finally the House of Lords voted in favor of his exit draft. A year later, on Christmas Eve 2020, Britain and Europe agreed on a free trade agreement, the infamous TAC, no TCA. The disorderly exit was averted at the last minute. However, fewer and fewer Britons see Brexit as a gift, although it's a gift that keeps on giving, I must say. According to a survey, 56% now consider leaving the union to be a mistake, according to the Opinion Research Institute, YouGov. Of those who voted to leave the referendum in 2016, only 70% still hold to their opinion at the time, and that's fewer than ever. And the reasons for this are diverse. The shortage of skilled workers, the cost of living crisis, rising energy bills and inflation have led to regrets about Brexit, explained British election researcher John Curtis from the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. After the austerity budget presented by Treasury Secretary Jeremy Hunt last week, the outlook for the coming years is bleak also. The country is in recession and living standards are falling. And according to experts, Brexit is also responsible for this because it made trade more difficult. It increased the shortage of staff and increased political and economic uncertainty. And this made Great Britain unattractive as a trading partner, even if Hopper sees that differently. It is a reality that the Conservative Party is increasingly having to grapple with. But they don't want to. And so it was Hunt himself who admitted a few days ago that Brexit had created trade barriers between Great Britain and the EU, which he now wants to gradually reduce. But the only way is a way they don't want to go. But this is a novelty. After all, criticism of the exit from the EU was taboo, not only among the Tories, so as not to alienate voters who voted for it at the time. But, as I already said yesterday, if you want to reduce trade barriers, you have to align closer to the EU. And that's what, what the Tories don't want. So they can talk about that all they want, but they won't. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.